Now we are going to go to a very special session called as Importance of Doubting <coughs> and Danger of Blind Faith and Importance of Faith and Danger of Doubting. Uh, see, Importance of Doubting means what Prabhupada said, Doubting is the function of intelligence, Prabhupada writes. Uh, intelligent, yeah, intelligent boy means you should have doubts, you should have questions, just like you all gave me a big bunch of questions. Huh? That's a sign of intelligence. You should ask questions like that. At the same time, uh, importance of doubting and danger of blind faith. One should not have blind faith. At the same time, importance of faith and danger of doubting. That is other other side. That is also very important. So we will do that now. See, you see the heading? Importance of faith and danger of Doubting and importance of doubting, danger of blind faith. So the second line says that you should have faith, correct? No. First line says that, but the faith should not be blind faith. If you read four point thirty four Bhagavad Gita, in that verse purport Prabhupada writes, uh, absurd inquiry and blind following both are condemned. He says. Huh? So we will <coughs> please repeat this verse. <coughs> Ashraddadana Purusha Dharmasya Syaparantapa Aprapyamam Nivartante Mrityu Samsara Vartmani Those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me. O conqueror of enemies, Arjun. Therefore, they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. This is 9.3 Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is speaking. Third verse of the ninth chapter. Aprapya means without attaining me. Maam nivartante. They fall into this. So here is a man who is doubting, surrender to Krishna. Huh? Should I surrender or not? He's a little doubtful, fellow. Mm -hmm. Read that. One of you, who has the mic? Yeah. Ignorant and, ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain good consciousness. They fall down. For doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. So, this is uh, fourth uh, chapter, 40th verse. This is also very important verse. Uh, this one. There was one doubting Thomas. In Bible, you hear his name. Huh? This doubting Thomas would doubt every small thing. He had no trust in anything. Just like there was one farmer, he asked his friend, Hey, what have you put for this year? Have you put rice or wheat or corn? What have you put? The farmer said, I wanted to play safe. I didn't put anything. He said, Why? Not sure whether rain will come or not. But the first farmer, he had put some paddy and you know, we eat everything. And, and, and then that year, rains came. So naturally, crops grew. Huh? So, the second farmer did not take any risk at all. Huh? He said, in the name of not taking risk, he didn't put anything. Will he get anything? He won't get anything. Huh? So, one man asked Prabhupada, Swamiji, you people are after Krishna so much. After doing this all your life, at the end of your life, if you come to know there is no Krishna, then what will happen? He asked. So, Prabhupada said, you come and see how happy our lifestyle is. Huh? Prabhupada said, we are eating the best of prasadam. And you are singing. And we are dancing. Hmm? And we are leading a clean life. We don't put dirty substances into our mouth. Like cigarette or liquor or drugs or anything. We lead a clean life. Huh? Our habits are clean. Our dealings are respectful. And uh, we are eating the best of the prasad and we lead a very happy life. For us, right from morning to night, our life is like entertainment for us. It's a joyful life it is. And then Prabhupada said, in this way, even if even if there is no Krishna, if we led our whole life, we have led our life happily. But if you come to know there is Krishna at the end of your life, what will happen to you? Because you have not followed Krishna, you will go to hell. Because you have not done anything for God. Everything you did for yourself. So Prabhupada threw the question back to him. Like that. So, so what is the problem in remaining faithless? Yeah. The faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotional service. That is the purport of this verse. Faith is created by association with devotees. Yeah. There was a rich man who came to a temple 
devotee gave him mala, jap mala. Six months later, he came. So, devotee asked him, are you chanting? He said, no, I'm not chanting. He said, maybe you are very busy with your business. He said, oh, business, I have handed over to my children. I am already 66. I am old man, he said. So, then they asked, okay, if you are not very busy in the business, then what keeps you busy? Huh? You know, you have some uh, household uh, things to be done. He said, no, that I don't have any uh, such big duty at home. I have ample of time, he said. Then why are you not chanting? Lagan nahiya, he was telling. Huh? I don't have that faith. That's what he is saying. Somebody does not have the faith, they cannot chant daily. All of you, you began with one round. Huh? Eventually you came to two rounds. By Sankal camp, you are supposed to come to four rounds. In Spuruti camp, you are supposed to come to eight rounds. Utkarsh camp, you are supposed to come to sixteen rounds. So you all have increased your faith. With, with increasing faith, you, you will be able to chant huh? Hare Krishna. And your faith is not increasing, you will see that boy will come to class and go, but he will not increase his round. Huh? It's very easy to understand this. Um, say, for example, once we were uh, go, supposed to go to Bombay in a car. So we went like this on a rainy day in the morning. So there, were, there was like a V type of roads, two roads going. So we weren't sure whether we should take this road or this road. It was early morning, 5 o'clock. Huh? So then we thought of taking this road. We took it, but our driver was very slow because he was looking here, looking there, you know, to check with somebody whether is it the correct road. Then one tea shop was on. So we went to the tea shop and asked them, Sir, is it the correct road to Bombay? And the old man told us, You see, I think you guys uh, took a wrong turn. See, you take a U turn and go back. And then at one point you'll find a V. And the other road is the road to Bombay, he said. As soon as our driver heard it, he took a U turn, came back, and now his speed was like high speed. <laughs> now, why was the speed so high now? And earlier the speed was very slow. He was not sure of the road. When you are not sure of the road, the speed will be slow. When you are sure of the road, the speed will be? Uh, that's the whole point. Like if you want to go back to Godhead, we have to go at the escape velocity, you know? You know, it is 11 km per second. Correct, no? A rocket should go at what speed? Yeah. If you can one second go 11 km, which means our intensity in Krishna consciousness should be such that we will not take a U-turn and come back. In this verse, which we read just now, he says, Ashrad dadana purusha dharmasya saparantapa aprapya maam nivartante. Without attaining me, these people take a U-turn and come back, he says. Why? Because they didn't have necessary intensity in devotional life. Huh? seriousness in devotional life or faith in devotional life. So, we are going to talk more about the faith. And how is the faith created? By the association of devotees. Look at Srila Prabhupada here below. All these uh, young boys and girls, they are all from America. Hmm? And although they are born in a different culture, different land, they have not even heard the word Krishna before. But now, having read Prabhupada's books, they have become so high quality men and women that they become first-class class brahmanas. Eh? They have given up all bad habits. So, by association, such faith is created. And what is the nature of faithless? Unfortunate people, even after hearing all the evidence of Vedic literature from great personalities, still have no faith in God. They are hesitant and cannot stay fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Thus, faith is the most important factor for, pro for progress in Krishna consciousness. Yeah. They are hesitant to commit themselves to Krishna. Huh? What, are, what is commitment? For example, agreeing to come for the weekly program, you know? agreeing to chant Hare Krishna more rounds, agreeing to uh, join the reading groups or the MMCs, the mantra meditation circles, or agreeing to go to the point where you want to do something for Krishna. Not only you take in, you also give out by, you know, going out and distributing Prabhupada's books, you know, helping the movement and uh, helping Prabhupada's uh, mission and spreading it. See, when can you spread? When you are yourself very convinced. Hmm? Like that. So, in, he's saying the nature of faithless means they are hesitant. Huh? They cannot stay fixed in devotion. You know what's a fixed up devotee? A fixed up devotee is a shaky devotee. Huh? Shaky devotee means today he'll be chanting and saying, and the next three months you won't see him. Huh? He will go to movie, party here, there. Then he'll get some kicks there. Then again he'll come back. Huh? Again, he will become a devotee. Again, he will put the like and come back. Now, I want to be a devotee now. Huh? Like a pendulum going like this. 
वट इज कॉल्ड रियल फेथ इन दैतन्य चरित्रा मित्र इट इज सैड दैट फेथ इज कॉल्ड कंप्लीट कन्विक्शन दैट सिंपली बाय सर्विंग द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण वन कैन अचीव ऑल परफेक्शन दैट इज कॉल्ड रियल फेथ कृष्ण भक्ति कैले सर्व कर्म कृत हाय इसेस श्रद्धा शब्दे विश्वास को है सुदृढ़ निश्चय कृष्ण भक्ति कैले कर्म सर्व सर्व कर्म कृत हाय व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस इफ आई बिकम कृष्ण कॉन्शियस एवरीथिंग विल बी टेकन केयर एंड आई हैव नथिंग टू वरी कृष्ण इज ऑल गुड ही विल टेक केयर ऑफ मी आई जस्ट हैव टू चैंट हिज नेम्स एंड बी हिज गुड डिवोटी ही इज वाचिंग मी ही इज गाइडिंग मी ही विल प्रोटेक्ट मी ही विल nourish me uh, he knows what is good for me hmm. one should have that firm faith that is actually called the faith uh, one once upon a time in one village there was one mother and a small son and the, and the mother sent the son to the gurukula and the boy went to gurukul for four five years later on the guruji said now you can uh, stop coming to these classes you should go to that gurukul in the next village huh? For learning certain special things, you have to go there," he said. So now this boy came back and told the mother that he has told me to go there. Mother said, "Yes, you will have to go crossing a jungle, huh? the other side." So the boy was going, coming. Sometimes you would hear the sounds of, you know, sometimes there will be bears, you know, bear. Sometimes cheetah, huh? sometimes uh, snakes, because you are crossing through a forest and coming. So one day he cried to the mother and said, "No, I don't want to go any more to that school. I am afraid." He said. Mother said, "Beta, why are you afraid? Your elder brother is always there. Hmm? You can, if you call his name, his name is Gopal." She said. Huh? He said, "Really? I never knew I had a brother. Huh? I thought I am the only son. Who is he?" He asked. And the mother said, huh? "You just call his names, and he will come. He wears a peacock feather. You know, he wears a pitambar." Yeah, you know, he wears beautiful jewelry in his body. He's bluish in complexion. He always plays on his flute. <laughs> He's a very handsome, uh, uh, pure master of all living beings. Huh? You just call him. He's a protector of his devotees. Mm-hmm. So you call him. He will take care. She said. So mother used to do bhajans and everything. The boy had heard. So one day when he was going in the forest, uh, he saw a snake crawling on the road. He became afraid. He called Gopal. Immediately, Lord Krishna came. Huh? and then the snake vanished from there then krishna caught his hand and escorted him to the end of the forest and this boy was in a very happy mood with krishna talking to him all the while and in this way occasionally he would call and krishna would come one day it so happened that you know there was a guru purnima festival in the guru's ashrama everybody was bringing some eatables to give to guru So he thought, what can I carry? So he wanted to ask his mother to cook something. But the mother was very feverish that day. Night she was bedridden. Then he thought, morning she'll be all right. Morning also she continued to be sick. So the boy didn't ask her anything. He went to the empty hands. While in the jungle, the boy remembered, maybe I can ask Gopal to bring something. No. So then he asked Gopal. Even without his asking, Krishna came and gave him one small vati with one. Special item called paramana, we call it. Paramana is like some what like a sweet rice kind of thing, like rabadi, rabadi kind of thing. So Krishna said, "See, today Guru Purnima, you want to carry for your Guru? You can take this." He said. So he took that very happily. All the boys have brought big vessels, this much big, this much big. He was the one who brought the smallest one. When when he gave it to Guru, Guru put it in one vessel, but the whole vessel became full. And this was also full. Purna mada, purna mida. Huh? And the guru was amazed. What is this magic? Huh? Then he put it in another bigger vessel. That also became full. As many vessels he put, they were all getting filled up with the same item. Although this was a small vessel, guru became little amazed. He called the boy and said, "Hey, tell me where you got this from? It looks like a magical bowl." Huh? So the boy said, "My my brother Gopal gave this." And then he told the whole story. Now the guru was an impersonalist. Huh? He was taken by surprise. Really? Do you mean to say you see Gopal eye to eye? Huh? <clears throat> and the boy said, "Yeah, I have seen him several times. Huh? Several times he has come. He has escorted me." He said. Guru said, "Okay, come. Let's go to forest. I am also curious to see him, huh? because he he is a man. Guru always used to teach Upanishads huh? and Vedanta Sutra, and he had heard about Krishna, but he had no faith." 
So he told the boy, now I'll hide behind a bush and you call Gopal, he said. And the boy told Guruji, no need to hide, you can stand with me. Gopal will come and we both can talk, he said. Guruji said, you don't understand. Huh? These things are little advanced things. Huh? <laughs> I will hide behind the bush. You talk to him, I will see from the bush, he said. And Guru went behind. And the boy started calling Gopal. Govinda, Govinda, Gopal Nandala. Govinda, Govinda, Gopal Nandala. Govinda, Govinda, Gopal Nandala. Govinda, Govinda, Gopal Nandala. Nandala Soda Luna. Mystically didn't appear at all, although the boy was calling repeatedly. The boy had tears in his eyes. He said, why? What happened to you, my dear brother? Why are you not coming? You know, did I do anything wrong? Why are you not coming at all? <clears throat> then there was Akashwani in the sky. Krishna spoke, he said, see, his, this boy's name was Manikumar. Huh? <clears throat> he said, hey, uh, my dear boy, why am I not coming today? You are embarrassing me by calling me in front of someone who has no faith in me. I come whenever you call me in the forest. Why? Because your mother is my pure devotee. She has done so much devotion for me. I am obliged to her. Therefore, I come to protect you. You are her son. Therefore, I come. Right now, you are embarrassing me by calling in front of you. But someone is watching me who is not supposed to be watching me. I don't show myself to those who are faithless. So, I'll come another time, Krishna said. And then the boy stopped. And the Guruji came out of the bush, very embarrassed. And he burst into tears and said, My dear boy, you are so blessed that because of you, I also could hear the speech of Krishna at least. Although I couldn't see the form of Krishna from the Akashwani, I heard. And that Guruji who was a Mayavadi, impersonalist. He gave up his Mayavadi. He said, today onwards, I'm going to start reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Huh? <laughs> he started studying Bhagavatam. He went on to become a Vaishnava Vaish devotee. So, that's what, that's what he's saying. One should have a firm faith. See, in the picture, what you're saying is, Prithu and Archi, they are returning back home, back to Godhead. Huh? Perfectly, they lived their lives. Read that translation. After? After attending me. After attaining me, the great soul who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. So they are going back to Vaikuntha. Pure um, devotees of Krishna. Arirade Yishuk Krishnam Acharattapa Uttamam. He performed great austerities for Krishna, this Prithu Maharaj. Both the husband and wife, they went back to God. Okay, what, is, what is called real faith? As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, all of you said this verse. Yata taror mula nishechanena, tripyanti tatskanda bhujo pashakaha, 
प्राणोपहारातेन्द्रियाण तथवर्हणमच्युतेज By giving water to the roots of a tree, one satisfies its branch, twigs, and leaves, and by supplying food to the stomach, one satisfies all the senses of the body. Similarly, by engaging in the transcendental service of the Supreme Lord, one automatically satisfies all the demigods and all other living entities. Yeah, two examples are given here. One is what if you water the root of the tree, whole tree gets nourished. Huh? Similarly, if you please Krishna, Achyuta Ijya, then all thirty-three crore devatas become pleased. Similarly, if you put food in the belly, then all the parts of the body become nourished. Prabhu used to ask, "Do you put the food here? Do you put the food here? Do you put the food here?" Like that, he asked once, and he was giving a class. There is only one hole where you put the food. Which is the hole? Mouth hole, he said. So one disciple was sitting. He said, "Prabhu, there is something called basti." He said, "Prabhu, sir, what is that?" He said, "In basti, they give medicated oils." Uh, or foods from the buttocks they give from behind, what they give. A proper said that that is only given in a diseased condition. He said not in a healthy condition. Healthy condition anybody puts food from behind. Huh? You only put in the mouth. <laughs> and diseased condition means one goes to demigods and asks for different different things. That's a diseased condition. Therefore, instead of giving to Krishna, you give to somebody else. Huh? Like that proper said. So there was there was only one way which is achyuta ijya. Serve Krishna, then all are pleased by that. Hmm? Krishna took from Akshay Patra one grain, put in the mouth. What happened to Durga Samani and his disciples? You all know, correct? No, everybody became satisfied by that. What is called real faith? Therefore, after reading Bhagavad Gita, one should promptly come to the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. One should give up all other engagements and adopt the service of the Supreme Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead. If one is convinced of this philosophy of life, that is faith. Yeah. See, one should give up all other engagements. Means what? For example, if any of you here think that you belong to a particular caste, then you will work for the people of that caste. Huh? If you think you belong to one state, then you will become a part of that club. Huh? Like, for example, somebody makes a Tamil Nadu Tamil club, a Telugu club, a Kannadiga club. Correct? No. You they make groups and colleges. You know that, and you become part of that, and you work for only those people only. Why only for those people? Why not work for the welfare of all human beings? Is it? Why only that group? Or if you think I am an Indian patriot, you will only work for India only. So these are all smaller dharmas. Huh? Although it is good, but it is a limited dharma. It is. So Krishna is telling that sarva dharman, maame ekam. That's what he is saying. So when you surrender to Krishna, then you take up all Krishna's engagements. You take on behalf of Krishna, you do service. Huh? Like all the Western people, you know, Prabhupada's disciples, they came to Vindavan. Men were wearing dhoti kurta, huh? women were wearing sarees. They were sleeping in Vindavan. The Vijayabasi saw them and they were shocked because American women wearing saree, how rare it is. Even Indian women nowadays don't want to wear saree; they want to wear mini skirt. Huh? But American women wearing saree and sweeping the floor, and American men wearing dhoti kurta, isn't it? Not an ordinary thing. Not one or two. Prabhupada made ten thousand disciples in America like that. Huh? So they were shocked because these people are not ordinary people. The Western people who took to Krishna consciousness, they have given up all their culture, their country, their comforts, their wealth, and they are coming to India to learn from Prabhupada's books and live in Indian temples in equatorial zone, hot climate. You can see that. So uh, you can see that they are doing Sarva Dharma and Parityaja. Correct? No, dedicated their lives. Now. Dedicating life doesn't necessarily mean you have to shave up and become brahmachari. Huh? Some people may think like that. You are telling us to give up everything. But Arjuna was actually a warrior. He was not a brahmana. He was a warrior, and he was a married man. He was not a, a monk. Huh? But for him, Krishna says, he says that don't fight with your enemies out of hatred. You fight for my sake. Huh? You fight as Krishna's servant. Don't fight as an enemy of Kauravas. He said. If you fight as enemy of Kauravas, you get victimized by sin, huh? and you like punya and papa like that. But you work on my account. See, this is a very deep concept Krishna taught. What is auspicious? What is inauspicious? You know, if you see as a devotee, then you will understand this point. One time, 
I uh, I was invited in a invited by one rich man. He said, "Swamiji, can you come to the crematorium today afternoon?" His uh, father had passed away. So we generally don't go to crematorium unless a devotee is initiated devotee. We don't go. We just send others to go. So I was not in a mood to go. But then this man again told me that actually, if you come, I have one special request. You give a lecture for twenty minutes. He said. We have three hundred people coming, and I want you to give one copy of Bhagavad Gita to all of them. He said. I said, really? Immediately accepted. Huh? Yes. I went. I gave a copy of Bhagavad Gita to three hundred people and spoke about half an hour to them. I was very happy. So then another day, I heard from my senior Radha Gopinath Prabhu. He was invited for one marriage. Huh? So he asked, "What is the program?" They said, "We are making a stage there." And you can sit and give a lecture. There are going to be kirtans in the beginning. Some kind of bhajans will be there. After that, you can give a lecture for an hour. So he went and sat on the stage. But in marriage, nobody was in a mood to sit and hear lecture. Everybody was wearing dresses, jigi 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 dresses, huh? all uh, glitter and glamour. All of them wearing necklaces and dresses, silk sarees, and you know, men and women. They were all moving very fast here and there. Ha ha ha! He he! They were forming groups and talking. And Prabhuji sat and he took the kartal. He read the ten minutes kirtan, but he observed that nobody was in a mood to sit down and hear because they are in an enjoying mood in marriage. Correct, no? So then Prabhuji went to that organizer and said, "I also have another important thing to do. I am going. I did some kirtan few minutes." And the organizer also didn't insist. He said, "Okay, I understand. I understand. You can carry on." So then I was talking to Prabhuji about this. So Prabhuji was telling that my going to Shmashan, for example, that appears to be an auspicious place, but from Krishna conscious point of view, it is. Well, why auspicious? Because I gave them a message from Krishna, and I gave Bhagavad Gita also, isn't it? On the other hand, you go to a Mangal Karyalay where nobody wants to hear about Krishna. That is a Mangal Karyalay, <laughs> correct, na? Because people have no interest in. So, what is Mangal? What is a Mangal? Should be seen from whose reference point of view? That. That's what makes this path very, very special. Now, Arjuna is killing warriors in battlefield. Huh? Is it auspicious or inauspicious? No. Some people are saying inauspicious. They are saying who also said inauspicious? Anybody? It is auspicious. Why? Because all the warriors they went back to Godhead. How many of you know that? In the battlefield, all the warriors went back to Godhead. You know that? Katai vajanye naraloka vira ya ahave Krishna mukhara vilnau. नेत्र पिबंतो नयना अभिराम पार्थास्त्रपूता पदमापुर दिस वर्स इन भागवत पार्थ अस्त्रपूता मीन वाट पार्थ हू इज पार्थ अस्त्र मीन वेपन पूता मीन वाट सी पूत मीन प्यूरीफाइड पूत ना मीन नाट प्योर पूत ना मीन नाट प्योर सिमिलर इयर पूता मीन प्योर पार्थ अस्त्रपूता By the arrows sent by Arjuna, when Arjuna's arrows touched the body of the soldiers, at that time they were all glancing at Krishna's beauty. So the arrow evaporated their sinful reactions because they were lovingly seeing Krishna's form. So naturally, aham tu aham sarva pape bio. So Krishna took away their sin. Just like if you have a hot tawa, you know, pan, you take water and sprinkle it. It just absorbs, you know. Like that, the sinful reactions are absorbed by Arjuna's arrows, and what happened to those soldiers? They all, uh, it is said that Parth Astra Puta Padam Apurasya. They all went back to God. It is said Param Padam. Huh? There is one more verse in Bhagavad Gita which says Hatha Ha Gata Ha Swarupam. Huh? Hatha means when they were killed, Gata Swarupam. They attained their Swarupa. Hmm? Therefore, this war is an auspicious war. Our Arjuna killing the warriors. Huh? Arjuna had a firm faith. He said, "Karishye vachanam." Taba. How many of you know that? Last part of Gita, Krishna, Arjuna says, "Krishna is asking Arjuna, what do you want to do now?" Karishye vachanam. Taba. I will obey your instruction, and I will fight the battle. That is real faith. He surrendered. So, in nine point three purport, Prabhupada talks about three classes of men who are practicing: third class, second class, and first class. Now, let us read about the third class. Read it. There are three divisions of Krishna conscious men. In the third class, are in the third. Now we class, all can check. We are in which class? Third class, second class, or first class? You can check it. Yeah. 
In the third class are those who have no faith, no faith. Even if they are officially engaged in the devotional service, they cannot achieve the highest professional stage. Most probably, they will slip after some time. They may become engaged, but because they haven't complete conviction and faith, it is very difficult for them to continue in Krishna consciousness. We we have practical experience in discharging our missionary activity that some people come and apply themselves to Krishna consciousness with some hidden motive and as soon as they are economically a little well situated, they give up this process and take to their old ways again. It is only by faith that one can advance in Krishna consciousness. Like sometimes a boy comes, says, hey, you, you, all of you voice boys, eh? the youth, your youth center has many toppers. Eh? Many times in our youth centers, Near the colleges, we have seen many department uppers stay in our center. Huh? Computer science, mechanical engineering, many times. We have many times university toppers also, who are devotees. Huh? Many of the colleges. In Pune, three, four colleges, we have university toppers with us. Huh? So, when other boys see that, hey, these boys are eating pure food, they have good habits, and they are also toppers. So, if I join, I can also get good score. Huh? They will pull me up. Huh? They have a stood good study culture. So, they come for that. But then they come to know they have to attend the morning program. <laughs> they have to, that is too much. And they have to chant Hare Krishna. They like Prasad, but morning program is difficult. <laughs> so they are struggling and dragging. Or sometimes they come. And once they get good marks, then they think, oh, let me go out. <laughs> because they didn't come for Krishna. They came for academics. Yeah. Similarly, some people come for Prasad. Some people come for good habit. Like that. Like some, some people... Like one boy said, uh, Prabhu, I am a devotee. Can you introduce me to some congregation devotee? If they can provide me a job. I introduced him to an industrialist. Mm -hmm. Next day, he got a job, this boy. Huh? And after getting a job, he never came to temple at all. Huh? Then I asked the industrialist, is he coming to company? Ah, he is coming, he said. Then six months later, this boy showed up on a festival day. I asked him, are you chanting? Chanting karne ki ichha Prabhu ji, lekin ho nahi para hai. Because his intention in uh, putting Tilak and coming to temple was what? Get a job, that's all. So, these are third class people, which means they have some hidden motive. They come, once that hidden motive is fulfilled, then they go away. They don't continue practicing. Yeah. As far as the development of Like faith, here I have given the, in the side, you see four kinds of pious men. Read that. Oh, oh, best among the Bhar Bharatas. Four kind of men begin to... Four kinds of pious men. Four kind of pious men began to re render devotional services unto me, the distressed, the desirer of the wealth, the inquisitive, and he who is searching for knowledge of the absolute. Correct now. Artho, Jignasu, Artarti, Jnani. So, Dhruva Maharaj was distressed. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Gajendra was distressed. Dhruva Maharaj was desirer of wealth. You know, the four Kumaras were inquisitive. Like that. Shavnagadrish was searching for knowledge. So, we can give examples. Like somebody is distressed, they come to temple, when the problem is over, they go away. Correct, no? Or somebody wants some wealth, they got a big, they became a millionaire, then they forget God after that. Correct, no? So then they are third class. No? As far as the development of faith is concerned, one who is well versed in the literatures of devotional service and has attained the stage of firm faith is called a first class person in Krishna consciousness. Why are we giving such a day-long training programs here? This is the reason. We have to become well-versed in literatures like Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. When you become well-versed, then you develop what faith? Firm faith. You develop. Then you can become a first-class devotee. Yeah. And in the second class are those who are not very advanced in understanding the devotional scriptures, but who automatically have firm faith that Krishna Bhakti or service to Krishna is the best course and so in good faith have taken it up. Yeah. So this is second-class people. For them, their knowledge is not very deep. They can't quote slokas, uh, scriptures and all. But they have faith that devotees are genuine people. Huh? Iskhan is good. See their clean lifestyle. They follow poor regulative principles. They chant Hare Krishna. They worship Krishna. And they are innocent. They are simple. They are faithful. And I have seen their life, not for just one day, two days, for years we have seen. We can follow them and we can also attain perfection. So that faith they have, that type of faith. In the scriptures, Devotional scriptures and in devotees and in deities and the lifestyle, they have the faith. They are second class. They may not have knowledge so much of scriptures. They are also in a learning mode. But they have the faith. Yes. Thus, they are superior to the third class who have neither perfect knowledge of the scriptures nor good faith but by association and simplicity are trying to follow.
the third class person in krishna consciousness may fall down but one in, is in the second but but when one is in the second class he does not fall down and for the first class person in krishna consciousness there is no chance of falling down one in the first class will surely make progress and achieve the result at the end yeah so that means in case we are in third class we should try to come to at least second class because in second class one does not fall down professor that means you have developed a firm faith in uh, devotees and the scriptures and the lifestyle of a devotee then at least the faith is there and the knowledge is coming slowly knowledge is increasing first class person has both faith also and knowledge also both yeah as far as the third class person in krishna consciousness is concerned although he has faith in the conviction that devotional service to krishna is very good he has not yet gained adequate knowledge of krishna through scripture scriptures like shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita sometimes these third class person in krishna consciousness have some tendency toward karma yoga and gyana yoga and sometimes they are disturbed but as soon as the infection of karma yoga or gyana yoga is vanquished they become second class or first class per- person in krishna consciousness ah sometimes boys when they come for iskon classes they are also attracted to some impersonal movements also eh? gyana they like like one boy i used to go to do a program one place so some 10 15 boys used to attend so this boy stopped coming to classes i was wondering why so one of the days uh, in the same uh, room i had to take my prasadam so so the main boy he told me in that room we can take prasad so in that room when i went to take prasad on the table i found many upanishads i found eh? you know and also this uh, you know ashtavakara gita and all that i found and in that room happened to be this boy's room who is not coming for the classes so he is belongs to the same flat only five six boys are staying so when i would give class he would go out somewhere he won't attend now why is he not attending my class because he has turned his attention to reading some other books you understand no he is diverted to gnana path uh, he has given the bhakti path up. therefore he is not coming for the class uh, he is getting d- diverted by that uh, that's what papa is saying one gets diverted to and some other boys now karma yoga means they will say that hey, why in the bhakti krishna 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 so much you know let me become a I'll, uh, some boys actually they want to go to upsc and become a bureaucrat of india and do some big thing they will say that probably you know, i can influence society in a big way from the top huh? is it wrong absolutely not wrong if you can go to that level you know one of the 300 or 400 people who are selected from upsc if you can play that role and do something great for india it's very good but what happens most of the time we have seen when a person goes to the level his life becomes super busy and even he standing sitting on job they don't do and leave alone doing something great for the country huh? but if one can do it is good so what happens somebody want to become a karma yogi somebody want to become a gnana yogi and then bhakti is not paid attention like that he says so we should try to elevate ourselves to bhakti yogi platform arjuna was actually uh, one of the five pandavas and kings of the world ambarish maharaj was king of the world they were bhakti yogis not that in the name of karma yoga they did work and only offered fruits they offered their hearts huh? not only the fruits is he said this was ಅಜ್ಞಾಶ್ರದ್ದಾಶ್ಯತಿ ಸಂಶಯಾತ್ಮನ ಬಲದೇವ ವಿದ್ಯಾಭೂಷಣ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ the ignorant or one who knows scripture but has no faith in it or one who has who is doubtful of attaining the goal even the with the faith perishes one who is afflicted with doubt attains nothing in his life nothing in the next and no happiness no happiness yeah so three words are used here agnyascha ashraddha dana samshayatma they are explained here first one is agnya means ignorant read ignorant the ignorant person like an animal with no knowledge of scriptures yeah, there are many human beings who are like two legged animals they actually indulge in all sinful activities they are, they are moving here and there without no, learning the knowledge about god they are ignorant people and faithless people the person who in spite of having knowledge of script, scriptures has no faith since he has some cause called some mat- nature yeah so about that prabhupada and ramanujacharya they say two very interesting uh, explanation 
the faithless or one who has no faith in developing this knowledge taught to him that is who does not strive to progress quickly yeah that means ramanuja is very smartly saying he is saying that this person has met a guru he has taken shelter of guru also and guru has given him instruction also but he is not processing that instruction uh, guru upadishtam he says in his sanskrit commentary upadishtam means guru has told him these are things you should do this you should not do he has heard it noted down but he is lazy to implement follow in his life so he is called as faithless also uh, and proper gives other another example some even though they have knowledge of or can cite passages from the revealed scriptures have actually no faith in these words they may have faith in bhagavad gita but do not believe in or worship of supreme personality of godhead yeah what proper says uh, ashraddha dana means some people know sanskrit they can even quote some shlokas also but they don't have faith like for example um, you know uh, i have an uncle even now my uncle he lives in uh, kerala and he must be very pretty old now close to 75 or 80 now he never married in his life he is also a celibate he remained like that so i was thinking anyway he is a celibate it will be nice if he joins this con you know so whenever i would go i went to south india uh, uh, i would sit with him and talk to him about the philosophy now what is his problem uh, you know when he hears about this matsya avatar kurma avatar varaha avatar narsingha avatar all this leelas huh, from the scripture he has heard those past times uh, whether lord comes like this in this world and performs these past times or these are all mythological huh? yeah he is not very sure not very confident although he is interested in vedanta sutra and upanishads huh, he studies those things when it comes to puranic literatures he has suspicion about this huh? it's not that he doesn't go to temple he will go to temple bow down to god also he's not an atheist he's this but he has doubt it's like the samshayatma like uh, ashraddha dana you understand no actually when you read proper purport it becomes clear when varaha deva appears in this world huh? where he appeared from anybody knows from where varaha deva appeared yes from from the nose of brahma from here he appeared huh? See if anything comes out of your nose, where does it go? It goes into dustbin. Correct, no? When you remove something from the nose, then you wash your hands also. Correct, no? Whereas if you see Varaha Dev, when he came out of the nose, he came out and started flying up. He was thumb size, then he was fist size, he was elephant size, then he was mountain size, and it was like a boar, uh, boar incarnation. When he flew up in the sky, Brahma even couldn't know who he is, uh, and even uh, kumaras din no you know marichi was there and his sons were nobody could ascertain who he is and all people were wondering some of them even thought is it a demon huh? is it some demigod what is this creature they didn't know huh? see i'll just show you that See, when you flew, when you flew like this, Brahma and all the rishis are wondering who is this personality. At that time, they observed that this personality's eyes are like lotus petals. Huh? There is only one person in this whole creation whose eyes are like Kamala Nayana. Who is that? Uh, Narayana Krishna. Shanta Garam Bujagasayanam Padmanabham Suresham Vishwadaram Gaganasadrisham Megavarnam Shubhangam. Lakshmikantam, uh, there Kamala Nayanam comes. So they, some of them understood, hey, this fellow has lotus petal like eyes, it looks like our Lord. At that time, the hairs on the body of boar, it was uh, having some water. So the Lord just shook his body like this. And all the waters came and fell on the devatas and rishis and all. And it was smelling like rose scented waters, like gulab gel. Huh? Such fragrance came. and the next moment all of them understood that this is none other than supreme personality of god head immediately they recite and sahasra sa purushah sahasra aksha sahasra pat they offered the purusha sukta prayers to lord varaha that's why in this song we sing vasati darshan shikare dharani tav lagna 
शशिनि कलंक कलेवनी मग्ना बोलिए वासति दशन शिकरे Two letters, two words, very big. What are the words? Yeah. Who is Keshava? That means Krishna only has come as Varaha Deva, Shukara Rupa, and Keshava Drupa, Drita Narahari Rupa, Keshava Drita Vamana Rupa. That means all the Dasha Avatars are coming from Krishna only. That means Krishna has all these Avatars within him. He can unzip them and release them whenever he wants. He can. Come as you know, wild boar. He can come as Narsimha. He can come as Vamana. He can come like that. So, after this, when the Lord sprinkled the water, this is the shloka. All the Janaloka Brahmana spoke this verse. Please repeat this verse. Vidhun vata vedamayam nijam vapur. Janastapasatya nivasino vayam. Janastapasatya nivasino vayam. Shatashiko dhuta shivambu bindu bhir. Nimrajyamana prishamisha pavita. Lord, undoubtedly we are inhabitants of the most pious planets, the Jana, Tapas and Satya Lokas. Jana, Tapas, Satya is beyond Swarga Lokas also. Buhu, Buvaha, Swaha, then Jana, Tapas, Satyam, top three planets. Yes, we belong to those planets they are saying, yes. But still we have been purified by the drops of water sprinkled from your shoulder hairs by the shaking of your body. See what they are saying. Huh? That means, uh, so imagine you are walking on the road, a pig comes out from the gutter and then shakes like this. And it falls on your face and on your body. What you will do? You will run to the bathroom and take a bath, correct? No? Whereas this is not ordinary pig. This is actually a wild boar, Lord Krishna Himself. So let us see at least 10 differences you can say between, you know, Krishna becoming this wild boar and Indra becoming a pig and becoming attached to the piglets. You know the story? So what is the difference between Indra pig and Lord becoming a boar? Who all can say the differences? Ten of you. Uh, one, give him the mic. Mic here. Indra became a pig because of his karma. Correct. And uh, Lord became pig to uh, protect uh, uh, earth. The earth, the earth. Very good. Hari One more. Anybody else? Ah, there's one hand up there. Ah, here one hand here. Here upside. Indra, Indra became materially attached to his pig body and was not. Uh, and was not uh, trying to leave his body when Brahma asked. Correct, yeah. Correct. And what, what about Lord here? He, Lord is not materially attached. Ah, Lord is not materially attached at all. In fact, he came to do good to the world. He was not selfish. Indra was selfishly attached to his body. Very good. Ah, one this side here. Let's give the mic here. And uh, this is coming here. Ah, where is the mic? Yeah, one mic this side, one mic that side. Indra was Hare. ignorant of his. Uh, Indra was. Hare Krishna Proji. Uh, Indra was. No. Uh, actually, Indra forgot about his uh, previous identity that he was the Lord of Heaven. Hare. But uh, Krishna remained. Uh, he knew he was the supreme personality. Yeah, exactly. Hare Bo. Third point. Yes. One more answer. Where is the mic? Where is another mic? There is one more mic. Is not here. Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah. Yes. Lord is not uh, contained in material mode, not in uh, contained in material mode. Indra is again contained in material mode. Ah, he is saying Lord's body is made up of what? 
ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಇಂದ್ರಾಜ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಮೇಡಪ್ಪ ಪಂಚಮ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಆರ್ಟಿ ಪಂಚಮ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಹರಿ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅವರು ಇಂದ್ರಾ ವಾಸ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಬಿಗ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಬಟ್ ಲಾಡ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಹರಿ Indra lived in a filthy condition and ate all the rubbish but here lord lords when lord sprinkled the water from his body it smelled like rose water ah that's a big difference sir see indra lived in a filthy gutter which was stinking badly but lord's body contained rose scented waters his body is very fragrant thank you and then at the another mic ah uh, yeah hare hare krishna prabhu ji to indra अपने कर्मों की वजह से बन गया था वो पिक्की बॉडी तो जब ब्रह्मा जी उसे लेने आए तो उसको मटेरियली में आनंद मिल रहा था इंद्र को लेकिन भगवान तो पृथ्वी को उद्धार करने के लिए आए थे हाँ ये सही इंद्र वॉज डिलेटिंग इन मेटेरियल एंजॉयमेंट बट लॉर्ड वॉज एक्चुअली कमिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड फॉर अ ग्रेट मिशन विच इज टू डिलीवर द अर्थ एंड ऑल्सो टू प्रोटेक्ट द डिवोट इज समिंग वेरी नोबल फॉर विच ही इंदिरा केम फॉर इज ऑन मेटेरियल एंजॉयमेंट वेरी गुड Uh, one hand behind behind ah uh, yeah yes hare krishna when a uh, lord came as bull then uh, he is means all means he is so beautiful that uh, all the devas are attracted to him but that is uh-huh. not he has eyes like lotus petals kamala nayana so he was very handsome looking very good indra was not handsome big was ordinary pig <laughs> okay behind uh indra becomes uh, too much attachment that even uh, brahma come to him and uh, told to him that uh, let's go with, uh, your your place is not here you you belongs to the heaven and you uh, lot of apsara are waiting for you but still he is too attached to with his uh, female pig and to his kids uh, that's the difference he saying he is that has to fill the things and too much attached and forgetful and bound by karma uh, indra represents a typical condition soul huh? where the lord is always in a liberated position hari bo hari krishna prabhu what what ah oh, yeah, yeah yes um when uh, indra comes as a pig he is not glorified by sages of <laughs> correct yeah <laughs> but w- when varadev comes yeah. comes he is glorified by all of, all of us very good hari bo well now there there are two hands up जब इंदिरा पिक बनाता तो उसके अंदर कोई ताकत नहीं था मतलब जब भगवान आए हरे कृष्ण पर वो जब इंदिरा पिक बनाता तो उसके अंदर कोई पावर नहीं था मतलब नॉर्मल था जब भगवान आए थे तो उन्होंने हिरणा का वध कर दिया था इतने पावरफुल थे वो हाँ एक्चुअली वराहदेवा But Indra was not powerful like the Lord. Indra was powerless. Very good. Very good. And any other hand was right here. Where is the mic? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Where is the mic? Yeah. Prabhu, like Indra was born uh, from the womb of his mother pig. But Lord, ke, uh, like even though came out of the nose of Brahma, like um, means manifested like very... He can like, manifest from anywhere. Ah, yes. Like somebody asked, who are the parents of Narsingh Dev? Pillar. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> he can come from pillar also he can come from nose also so lord has no restriction that he has to come only from the union of man and woman correct now very good right point hari krishna prabhu ji where is my prabhu ji ah uh, yeah here yeah, left left ah uh, yeah uh, prabhu ji uh, indra uh, was forced by material nature and he has no the, uh, no other qual- uh, qualities like uh, when he was indra means he has no powers uh, like of indra but uh, when varaha dev came he has uh, all the uh, powers of uh, varaha dev uh, krishna like uh, he has expanded uh, in uh, like his in his form the very important point what he is saying when indra became a pig he lost the glory of all the powers and amenities facilities he had as indra correct now he became ordinary pig whereas when lord came as varaha lord krishna came he had similar powers like supreme personality of godhead he could expand his body he could lift the earth 
could protect he had remembered he remained in his sachidananda body all the things wonderful there are two, one hari more hand Prabhu. behind yeah hari krishna prabhu ji where is it where is the hand up? yeah hari krishna all devotees ah uh, yeah yeah um um bulge um sir okay again thank you yeah. uh indra become uh, pig because uh, of uh, because he dis he disrespect um i हिंदी में बोल सकते हैं हिंदी में बोलिए ये इंदिरा मतलब पीक बन गया क्योंकि वो ये बृहस्पति बृहस्पति का मतलब हाँ ये बोल रहे हैं कि बृहस्पति का अपराध किया उन्होंने तो उनको दंड मिला उनको तो उन्होंने मतलब तो उनको जो सुअर का शरीर में दंड के कारण मिला उनको लेकिन भगवान को किसी ने दंड नहीं दिया और अच्छा से आए हाँ मतलब जब ये विष्णु बने मतलब क्योंकि वो बने क्योंकि जो डेमेन था ये हिरन हिरन यक्ष वो मतलब ये अर्थ को ये मतलब मतलब उसी के अंदर ये कर रहा था मतलब ड्रैग कर रहा था तो उसको मतलब सेव करने के लिए हाँ गिव हेम गिव द माइक उधर माइक दे देना उनको उधर भी इधर भी एक माइक देना उधर पीछे एक हाथ कड़ा है उधर ऊपर एक माइक पीछे भेज दीजिए उनको दे गिव दैट माइक दर हियर ऑल्सो या हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी Indra Indra's form demigod knows, but the form of Sukar Rupa even demigod don't know. Ah, very good, Hari Bo. See, Mukhyanti Atsure ha. Now Krishna says in Gita, na me bhi do sura gana. Even hosts of demigods do not know me. Krishna says. So even demigods could not ascertain Brahma's, I mean, Varah uh, Deva's identity. Whereas Brahma, everybody knew. I mean, uh, Indra has become a pig. All demigods knew that. Very good point. हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी हरे द माइक प्रभु जी हर हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी मैंने एक स्कॉन के डिवोटी से सुना था ये अमोघ लीला प्रभु जी से उन्होंने बताया था कि जो इंदिरा जब आए थे पिग की बॉडी में तो उनकी बॉडी इतनी पावरफुल नहीं थी मतलब सॉफ्ट थी और उनके जो टीथ थे वो भी बहुत मतलब ज्यादा पावरफुल नहीं थे लेकिन जब भगवान कृष्णा जी शो के रूप में आए थे तब उनके जो दो टीथ थे उन्होंने एक टीथ को अपने वृंदावन में लगाया था और एक टीथ को मायापुर में लगाया था दोनों टीथ से धरती को उठा करके वापस उसी जगह पे वेरी पावरफुल थैंक यू वन लास्ट बिहाइंड एकदम बिहाइंड उधर एकदम पीछे हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी दंड सो इन वेन इंदिरा वॉज Uh, but take, took birth in material world. He was his body was like perishable, but the Lord body of pig was not perishable. It was transcendental and eternal. Yes. And also, when the uh, Indra took birth as a pig, he this action was not pleased the uh, demigods. But like the uh, Lord took birth as a in the form of boar, so it pleased the demigods and. It, this was glorified by many demigods. Also. Wonderful, Hari Bo. Very thoughtful point. Yeah, you give the mic there. Yeah, there is one more devotee behind. Yeah. Hari Hari Krishna Prabhu ji, Prabhu ji, Hirnaksh ko varadan tha ki usko koi bhi jeev ya kuch bhi nahi mar sakta. Usne bas varha ka naam nahi liya. Isliye Prabhu Vishnu ne varha avtar isliye liye kyunki usko varha hi usko mar sakta tha aur Prithvi ko wapas la sakta tha. Correct, Hari Bo. Actually. Hiranya uh, actually cannot be killed by anybody else, no? Unless Lord Himself comes. So that was the power of our Varaha Deva. Thank you. One last somebody had a hand up. Okay, there are many hands up. I will not take now. Uh, <laughs> so the point is now you all understood that well. Uh, but now why I was telling you this? The faithless people means it's not that they don't know the Puranas, Shlokas. They may even quote also, but they lack. faith in that because he didn't have i asked him you can come and join puna temple welcome huh? but to join and dedicate his life to his kind temple you need faith correct no without faith can somebody become brahmachari how can dedicate he couldn't come so he still just he was working in a company he retired just sitting at home reading different uh, upanishads vedanta you know different different books and all and therefore on shankaracharya i saw one old man 85 year old man was uh, reading panini Uh, vyakaranam huh? so shankaracharya sang this first verse of the viveka chodamani bhajat govindam bhajat govindam govindam bhajat 
ಉಡಮತೆ ಪ್ರಾಗ್ರೆಸ್ but they have no actually faith in these words hmm? and they may have faith in bhagavad gita but they don't believe that krishna is the supreme personality of god head. there are many people in india who write bhagavad gita commentary they keep krishna and arjuna far away huh? and they will only talk about dry philosophy of what is soul what is body sat sat i have read many such commentaries before coming to vaishnav commentaries huh? so these people don't respect the lord hmm? they write all kinds of you know dry philosophy faithless fellows ha huh? and third fellow is doubting uh-huh. the person who mike is working but the other mike the person the person who in spite of having faith doubts if he can attain the perfection this person is destroyed yeah that means the person is having faith but he is still doubting you know whether i can attain perfection he is always suspicious huh? he is not confident see you feel happiness when when you follow faithfully the actions prescribed by the scriptures he says that action is accompanied by knowledge of individual atma you should know that i am not the body i am soul and i am following the scripture faithfully then you become happy in life huh? and then what prabhu is saying some solution prabhu has given read it one should therefore follow the principles of revealed scriptures with faith and thereby be raised to the platform of knowledge one should therefore follow in the footsteps of great acharyas who are in the disciplic succession and thereby attain success so it's very very simple you know follow in the footsteps of prabhupad and study prabhupad books that's all uh, these two things if you do your faith increases by that do everything so on the side i have shown the picture a brahmin and cobbler story so I I believe all of you must have heard this story from Prabhupada's Rajavidya book huh how many of you heard this story brahmin cobbler most of you know it huh so in this brahmin cobbler story the essential point is what see this pandit who was there the brahman he was very proud man huh he told narada that you know, i have done 5000 yagyas i have 10000 disciples huh and uh, he told the narada that when you are going to vaikuntha just check with the lord when am i returning back to vaikuntha hmm? so and then when narada went to cobbler cobbler was very humble he said oh great sage the holy feet of such sage is coming to my home is a great blessing upon me hmm? like that uh, he was glorifying narada and he also said i am i am a simple cobbler when will the time come when i can constantly recite the lord's glories i am not a brahman i am a simple cobbler he said and narada understood he is very humble cobbler devotee then when he went to vaikuntha you all know what Na- what narayana told narada that brahman will take million lifetimes to come to me whereas the cobbler will come to me in this very life so and then lord told narada tell them that i was putting a elephant into the eye hole of a needle huh go and tell them when he went and told this to brahman brahman laughed and said what are you talking 
anybody can put an elephant into eye hole of a needle, you are making a fool out of me. I think you never went to Vaikuntha, neither he told him. So he was faithless. But when he told the same thing to Cobbler, Cobbler said, what a wonderful Lord my Lord is, he can do magic miracles, he said. Narada asked him, do you really believe in Lord that he can do it? What he said? Anybody knows? Yes, what he said? Give him a mic. Thank you, the mic too. Mic on, Ankur. जब भगवान एक छोटे से बीज से इतना बड़ा पेड़ निकाल सकते हैं तो फिर वो एक सुई से हाथी क्यों नहीं निकाल सकते सो दैट वॉज बोगन बाई काबलर कैन इमेजिन सो नॉर्थ अंडरस्टूड काबलर हैज फेथ दैर फोर यू सी वन प्रोपाज वेंट टू अमेरिका प्रोपाज इंग्लिश वॉज नॉट अ वेरी वॉट यू कॉल इट हाई फाई इंग्लिश देर आर मेनी फेलोज हु आर इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिटी they speak very very victorian english eh? high fi english and all that people who speak proper english was very simple english correct and proper style of speaking is short short sentences he will speak eh? but what is special about proper this he speak the truth <laughs> that is it <laughs> you know see imagine you go to a doctor who speaks very stylishly and loots your pocket but doesn't cure the disease what do they use eh? on the other hand a doctor doesn't know so much uh, english He speaks short, short sentences, but he cures your disease. Correct, na? No? Prabhupada was like that. He was so honest and so truthful. Actually, if you hear Prabhupada's lecture, you can never say that you know something is confusing to me. What Prabhupada is saying? Swami ji, kya bol rahe hain? Samajh mein nahi aa raha. Bacha bhi nahi bolega. Even a child can understand what Prabhupada is speaking if you hear his lecture. So elementary, so simple, straightforward presentation of truth. So Narada understood why the Lord told. that cobbler is coming back to him hmm? see here i have shown in a flow chart format here see there are three categories persons who are almost like animals who have no faith in knowledge of scriptures even if they have knowledge or slight passages from scriptures they know but they have don't have faith hmm? and the third is even if they may have faith in scriptures they don't believe in supreme lord krishna huh? in this is three levels agnyascha arshada dana sanshay atma these are all the worst category hmm? first is those who have no faith and they are always doubtful is samshyatma vinashati hmm? suspicious people see if you have doubt you have to ask don't keep it with yourself hmm? because doubt will eat you up from inside hmm? always ask question so what is the solution see i have given yellow one you read it yellow ones follow uh, follow the principles of reliefs reveal scriptures with faith and rise to the platform of knowledge uh, next box only this knowledge will promote one to the transcendental platform of spiritual understanding follow in the footsteps of great acharyas who are in the parampara and attain success in this way studying the scriptures following in the footsteps of acharyas great souls like prabhupad that is our hope huh? by that we can increase our faith hmm? the association so now the easy part is coming now this part This is a somewhat a little revision of what you all did in DYS before itself. You have done the story. See, in this uh, elephant and blind, six blind men story, not that the blind men were wrong; they were partially right. They were, yeah. But the problem with partial rightness is, you know, each of them have a different paradigm of what an elephant is. You will see that different perception. So you studied about this pratyaksha anumana shabda. I don't have to tell you. You have gone through all these things. Four defects you all know, right? Imperfections is yes. Then to be illusion. Then to commit mistakes and creating propensity. That's a four. Huh? Yeah. Therefore, the information and theories in science are changed, updated, modified huh? because of these four defects. Hmm. so you know this uh, visible range is only 4 400 700 milli micron very narrow range huh? so when again wigner says that even if you photograph stars you know he says that still we have to take in through our senses only which are defective therefore huh, he says that whatever big astronomical you know, advancements are making there is defect which goes through the senses he says so all of you look at this Are you able to see the cylinders rotating? Just keep on looking at it without blinking your eyes. How many of you can see three cylinders rotating? 
Are they rotating? It's a, it's a paper, but still it looks like that. Okay. See this one, go towards the center and away from it, like this. Go to like this, you do like this. You see the two circles moving in opposite direction? How many of you can see that? Correct? No? They look like rotating. That's the effect of the eye. Actually, these are fixed things. They are not rotating. But eyes show that they are rotating. When you go towards it and away from it, the two circles rotate like this, opposite side. You see? This is the illusion of the eye. Our eyes are illusion. Now, how many of you can see all the circles moving, rotating? <laughs> they are not rotating at all. They look like rotating, you see? If you see, especially without blinking the eyes, if you see, they will rotate, all of them. <laughs> they are all illusion of the eyes. It looks like ships are coming, but they are also looking like bridge also, yeah. So, this is a, that was illusion to commit mistakes. Okay, these things, you may already know these examples, but I will show you other new mistakes I will show you. This cheating propensity we showed about pill down man before. I read it. Modern man turning from junk food to organic food. See, why man went for junk food? Junk food is very tasty, right now. But look at this fellow, he's already becoming fat now. He's fed up with junk food now because the obesity is increasing. The modern man is turning to organic food, natural food. God conscious servant leaders like Yudhishthira Arjun and followers of such role models act with freedom from false ego in alignment with wisdom literatures due to seeing their subordinates as respectable children of God. See, Modi ji told in an interview what he is saying, see. In the eyes of the world, being Prime Minister and Chief Minister may be a very big thing, but in my own eyes, these are way to do something for the people. Mentally, I keep myself detached from this world of power, glitz and glamour. And due to that, I am able to think like a common citizen and walk on my path of duty just like I would if I were given any other responsibility. Amazing, no? Actually, this is exactly what the scriptures teach for any leader. He used to live like this. Ambrish Maharaj lived like this. So, actually, he is this personality. Uh, he, before even coming to the post, he went and spent a lot of time with saintly people huh? in North. Huh? He spent. Now, after occupying the post, he is still getting a lot of advice from saints, rishis, many of the sannyasis and all. And he is trying to understand what the Vedas say, how a leader should lead and how the people should be cared for. So, he is including those inputs. That's why, he, how is he speaking all these things? Because he is learning the right things. Huh? Duty of every leader. Uh. Godless modern man fed up with fast paced life of stress and mental illness. <laughs> Look at this fellow, how he looks, eh? Stress fellow, huh? Yeah. Actually, when you want all control in your life, in your own hands, that's how you become like this. God centered families flourish in happiness. Godless families are breaking apart due to selfishly driven goals for money and sense gratification. Yeah. Look at this poor child, eh? Mother is thinking about herself and father is thinking about himself. So, you look at this family and look at this family. Eh? Big difference, no? Uh -huh. So, what I am showing here, the Vedic life teaches us, you know, how by adopting Vedic principles in your life, your life can be so much positively influenced. Similarly here, look at this leader, look at this leader. Huh? Isn't it? This leader is doing so many great things for the country. Aligned with God. Here, look at this fellow. Huh? He is uh, all he is concerned about his selfish money making, correct? No? So, I am just showing contrast, you see. See this and see this. Huh? Yeah. Youth suicides have been increased due to lack of spiritual training. Those who are spiritually trained to pray to Lord to get inner strength like Pandavas to face all challenges without skimming to suicide. See, the Pandavas, what all challenges they faced? Their wife was insulted, they were driven to jungle. Their be a poison was fed to Bhima. Huh? So many things. But they never thought of suicide at all. Huh? Yeah. S Siddharth Pichikala, a third year student of computer science at IIT Hyderabad, committed suicide. A 20 year old student of Indian Institute of Te Technology, Hyderabad, Siddharth Pichikala, committed suicide on Tuesday by jumping from the hostel building on the campus at Kandi in Sangaredi district, police said. This is the third suicide at the institute this year in, 
In July, Mark and uh, 2019, yeah. In July, Mark Andrew Charles, a second year master student from Uttar Pradesh, had committed suicide by hanging in his hostel room. He wrote in his suicide note that he may not get good marks and that there is no future for failure in this world. In February, a third year student, Aniruddha Mumenini, had ended life by jumping off the hostel building. See, all these people, because these people don't know anything beyond academics. Huh? That, uh, so, uh, yeah, Anumana Pramana, I have told before. Okay, read, read it. Microscope to see microscopic level objects. Telescope to see far away objects. 3D goggles to see 3D movies. 3, 3D goggles to see 3D movies. Photographic plate to see x rays. Photographic plate to see x rays. We need eyes of love to see Krishna. Ah. <laughs> But we need a special type of eye. For those things, you need the special type of eye. Same way you need eyes all over. Prem anjana churita bhakti vilochanena santasya daiva krita yeshu viloka yanti yamshyama sundara machinante gunasvarupam govindama adipurusham tamaham bhajami Brahma says achinte gunasvarupam. Krishna's beautiful form is achinte inconceivable for the common man. But with eyes of love, one can appreciate it. Yeah, same. You need eyes of love to see Krishna. Yeah. Why did Lord Krishna create the material world? So, from the spiritual world, from there he creates the material world, Karana, Ocean, and then the universe, and then Mahavishnu expands. Who is this Vishnu? Uh, Garudaksha Vishnu. Beautiful, no? Lord Krishna expands himself into every atom and every heart of all living beings. Yeah, super so. Goal of life is to purify our heart and go to back to Godhead. See, there are two pictures here. One shows Bhogavarati, another one shows. Who represents Bhogavarati here? And Sevavarati? Yeah, opposite, isn't it? So, we, what about us? In our heart, there is, a, there is Ramana mentality and Anuman mentality. Both are there. Now, we have to Destroy the Ravana mentality and awaken Anuman mentality. Yeah. Self awareness. Self awareness helps you to derive happiness from within, making you resilient to the winds of change. Yeah, when you become aware of your soul, just see how many benefits you get. Read the benefits around given. Improved mental and physical well being, improved concentration and focus in daily life, reduced irritation, anger, and frustration, increased confidence and self esteem. Less stress, worry and anxiety, greater inner peace and happiness, a positive outlook on life and better relationships. Mm -hmm. Just see. Actually, you don't even know. You think chanting is so difficult, but once you do it, you, you have innumerable benefits that are awaiting you. Huh? By self-awareness, isn't it? Self-awareness teaches you to act as a steward of resources. You and know what is the meaning of steward of resources? Like you look at this team leader, he has a group of people, all are smiling happily because he doesn't see that his people are meant to be exploited. He sees them as friends. He sees himself as a coordinator of, on behalf of God. Uh, so such leaders actually can keep their team very happy. Actually, if you act with uh, no false ego, in a friendly mood, as a facilitator of your group, then you can become a very good team leader. On the other hand, you have a bossing tendency. Will anybody like it? How many of you don't like to be bossed by somebody? <laughs> Nobody like a bossy leader, isn't it? So, yeah, that's called steward of resources. And then? And to protect your dependents and the vulnerable. Yeah. So, this is how Lord Ramachandra ruled. Huh? Help you connect with the Supreme Divine through devotional service, yoga of love, by which you can empower, you can empowered by the divine grace, doing things impossible. Yeah, like Arjuna was empowered, right? by Krishna to fight the battle of Kurukshetra. We can be empowered by divine grace. So, three things are there in purifying the heart. Um, see, I am the proprietor, I am the controller, and I am the enjoyer. These are three impurities. What is the opposite of that? Read it. I am the proprietor. What is the One of you read the left side. You say, I am the proprietor. One of you say that. Give next to you. Who is a strong fellow? Who I am the proprietor. Uh, read the other side. Everything belongs to Krishna. I am only a custodian of God's property. Yeah. I am the boss and controller. 
I am Das and servant of God. And you take reverse roles. See, he has a strong voice and you have a soft voice. So you repeat again. I am the proprietor. You say that. You will say. You say. I am the proprietor. Ah, and you have to say even more strongly. I am the proprietor. You say that. Ah, no, no, no. Strongly, strongly. I am the proprietor. Ah, now you read the opposite. Everything belongs to Krishna. I am only a custodian of God's property. Ah. I am the boss and controller. Hmm. I am das and servant of God and devotees. Mm. I am the enjoyer. No. My perfection is to be engaged in Lord's service. Yeah. So these three things we have to know. That's all. No? Yeah. And I've shown in slides. See, Prabhupada writes in seven point four. Read it. Generally, one who does not know the science of God assumes that this material world is for the enjoyment of the living entities, and that the living entities are the purushas, the causes, controllers, and the enjoyers of the material energy. See, this is material. Prabhupada once said, "This material world is meant for enjoyment." He said, "Then everybody said, 'Jai, that's very nice.' Prabhupada said, 'Not for your enjoyment, Krishna's enjoyment. <laughs> huh? Every every flower bearing uh, plant is producing flower for whom? Krishna. Fruit bearing tree is producing fruits for Krishna. And cuckoos are cooing for Krishna. Peacocks are dancing for Krishna. Cow is producing milk for Krishna." So if you see like that, then you know that Krishna is the enjoyer, and I am supposed to take these things and offer it to him. But Krishna is so kind that if you become his devotee, not that you will be stripped of enjoyment, you will not have any happiness. One time, Prabhupada was selling devotees. There was a rath yatra going on. Devotees are pulling the rath cart, correct? No. And when they get tired pulling the rath for a long time, then you are also allowed to sit in the cart. You know that? You can sit in the rath cart also. No? There are many, many bhaktas in Jagannath Puri also who will be on the rath cart. You have seen that yes. on the top of the cart. So, Prabhupada said, "How kind Krishna is! You pull his chariot to serve him. When you are tired, he also keeps you with with, with himself in the cart. And he eats rajabog, very nice prasad, and he gives the same prasad to his devotees, huh? his remnant. They also get to eat very nice prasad because they have feed him the best prasad, and they also get to eat nice prasad. You will see that if you look at the college hostels. Many times they give, put this damalu and uh, You know that kind of channa sabji and everything. Many times at the hostel that they cook hostel food, compare that with the kind of prasad that you eat. There's a big. How many of you saw a big difference? Saw the big difference right now, isn't it? So, Rupa is saying, look at the prasad Krishna gives his devotees. Look at the comfort with which huh? he makes his devotees' life more and more. So it's not that Krishna enjoys everything himself and doesn't give anything to devotees. It's not like that. The more you give him. The more he keeps his devotees happy, also. Hmm? Read below. We want to be in control of money, situations, and people around us, as per our wish, without anybody's interference. Yeah, everybody thinks. See, look at this fellow. He's sitting on gold biscuits, and he is also sitting on, and he is holding a dollar bag. Everybody want to control people, control money. Huh? Yeah. In Krishna consciousness, we become aware that earth, water, fire, air, and every active principle. All chemicals and all material elements are due to Krishna. Yeah. While exploiting the gross and subtle inferior energy, the superior energy forgets his real spiritual mind and intelligence. This forgetfulness is due to influence of matter upon the living entity. But when the living entity becomes free from the influence of the illusory material energy, he attains the stage stage called mukti or liberation. See how we became forgetful of Krishna. If you see. When we exploit the gross and subtle matter, and then we become forgetful. The more we do bhog, we get rog. After getting rog, people do some yoga. When they get little healthy again, they go back to bhog. So it's like a triangle: bhog, rog, yoga, bhog, rog, yoga. They get stuck in this. But the disease is this. See, look at this child. He want to eat the whole cake. You see. That's how. Ali Maharaj wanted to be king of all the three lokas. Huh? Duryodhana wanted to be king of the whole world. Proprietor, I am the proprietor. But what was Yudhishthira's consciousness? I am only a custodian of Supreme Lord's property. Yeah, Yudhishthira never thought I am king. I am only protecting Krishna's property. He thought like that. Controller chef. So here you look at this husband and wife. The wife is telling, "Morning, I told you to bring something. You forgot in the evening." Husband is saying, "Shut up your mouth! You never told me." He's saying, huh? "Both are controlling one another." You see, both look at each other's eyes and angry at each other. On the other side, you see, 
your man's mother is saying beta you be in my pocket and wife is saying no no you be in my pocket so both his mother he is like a mridangam in between <laughs> because both want to control him correct see this problem you will not understand you are all young boys now after marriage you can realize this <laughs> because generally women are very insecure no the mother has a lot of fear that till now i have been the queen of the house now my bahu has come daughter in law has come so she worries that will my son follow me or he will follow his wife that's the question mother gets in the mind so she checks whether my son is coming and taking advice from me or is he meeting me regularly does he care for me or he is neglecting me and then always running behind his wife and the wife is thinking oh, till now you have been mother's son now you be my husband huh? now you listen to me like the wife says so it's not a very easy thing women are very insecure and satisfying both is very difficult a intelligent man means he should tell his wife that i will always listen only to you and to his mother he should say i listen only to you huh? he may have to tell little lies huh? then only can keep both peaceful otherwise they'll pull him like this otherwise so uh, who is trying to become controller here ha huh? uh, both mother and wife both of them actually speaking in the bahu when the girl who is married what she should do she should tell the mother in law that you be the queen of the house i i will become your maid servant ha huh? if she can be humble and then the mother in law develops faith that okay this daughter in law is good she submissive to me then she will give more freedom Uh, and then husband's head can be cool actually these things these problems you will get when you get married don't worry now uh. no controllership mentality i am a servant leader to empower my team members to become leaders i am an instrument of god to serve those in my care i am not the ultimate controller this is the way every leader should think ideally speaking uh, no controller mentality i am simply an instrument in krishna's hands to serve those in my care uh, free free from false ego isn't it ah uh, see enjoy your mentality what is that fellow thinking that uh, fellow the hook on the mouth everyone and everything everyone and everything is here to serve me please please me please me and work for me and my enjoyment shape up or ship out <laughs> yes he is thinking himself as a supreme enjoyer look at this two kid two kids we what? have to purify our mentality of i am the enjoyer of all these toys you get lost yeah uh, so just like children sometimes take away others toys similarly alexander wanted to take everybody's country huh? and uh, throw them away huh? so ravana also wanted to enjoy other men's wives so this, these are the three mentalities that we have to get so this is the way we purify hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 that's how you get purified see proprietorship means like this control achievements like this enjoy achievements like this <laughs> so we want to do proprietorship controllership enjoy achievement so that's what everybody want to do in this world like children you see their hands are like this you have seen when they are newly born children small tender children even if you open their hand they will close like this you have seen that because they are coming in what mode it's called grabbing mode huh? and when a person dies like that mouth is also open and hands are like that Huh? Then again, next lifetime is born again as a child. How? What he will do? Again. So grab and leave. Grab and that's a proprietor mode. Huh? Proprietorship. Hmm. And controllership means Yerena Kashyap wanted the whole world to chant his name. Huh? Om Yerena Kashyap Ve Namaha. Hmm. One yeah, one Prahala didn't agree. Huh? Five year old boy. This fellow got so frustrated. He said, How can this small boy not? call my name and then he wanted to wipe out that boy in the course of doing that he got wiped out himself huh? is a audacious controller huh? okay now man always finds out ways to become happy without god see what all man has and look at this one listen up listen up okay this is an hey, rf up. meter what it does is it measures radio frequencies in the air okay so we're we're going to look at the numbers and we're going to compare it when someone's wearing the airpods okay so 
Now we're just gonna do a little test to see what the frequency is in uh, this little town. It's around 3,000 nanowatts per square meter. Okay, now let's put it next to the AirPods and watch it explode. It's a hundred times stronger than what we have normally in this little town. Even more, 300 times. Jesus, this poor girl's frying her neurons just to show this to you guys, okay? So if you have your brain cells, any brain cells left, you would stop using your AirPods right now. It's not worth it, really, it's not worth it. Get the wired version like we had before and just do yourself a favor. You don't get dementia, Alzheimer's, who knows, memory loss down the road, okay? None of these big companies are doing any studies. You know, Apple, they're not gonna do any studies to see what the harm is to your brain, you know? It's, it's not in their interest. <laughs> How coolly he's selling a dangerous thing, huh? Let's see. What, what diseases you can get, he's saying by Bluetooth? Huh? Dementia and uh, Alzheimer disease and neurons can be burned. Uh, he's saying if any any brains are still left, take care, he's saying. Actually, when I was in America, one fellow gave, gifted me this uh, Bluetooth thing. I started using it. Just three days I used it. You know, you put it here and then even in the airport also, my mo my mobile is inside the bag. But because of Bluetooth, you can go on hearing comfortably. I was hearing. Suddenly, I saw this. After that, I threw it off. I didn't use it. Huh? Because, you know, many of these devices, we don't know what dangers they are doing to our body. We don't know. Slowly, slowly, they are discovering. See, this is the main difference between God-given thing and man-given thing. Huh? Like, you know, we have been eating apple, oranges, you know, so many millions of years people have eaten. You know, God-gifted things are so natural, you can see that. No? But when man gives something, no, like this Bluetooth thing. Actually, I used to ask the devotees, hey, this Bluetooth, how, what is the mechanism by which it connects with the device? You know, is there anything raised or something coming, it will harm. Many devotees didn't know about it. Somehow Krishna has arranged to send me this video through somebody. No? After that, I, did, I refused to use it. Mm. So, why I am showing this? Man may find many comfortable things to use, but by using those comfortable things, eventually the diseases what come, you know, eventually come to know this. Because of the four defects, while inventing them, he cannot find out. Uh, later on, he comes to know. Yeah. So, therefore, in the Vedic process of learning also, we have Vedic professors, we have authorized college, which is Parampara, authorized books. I told you, Krishna gave it to Brahma and coming in Guru Parampara, where we wrote it on 5,000 years ago. From this slide onwards, the title is covered in another 5-6 slides, we will complete it. Uh, read it. On importance of doubting, just try to think over what Bhagavad Gita says. How Swamiji has discussed this matter. Apply your arguments, apply your logic. Don't take it as a sentiment or as a blind faith. You have got reason, you have got arguments, you have got sense. Apply it and try to understand it. It is scientific. You will gradually develop your attachment for hearing it and devotional service will be in the, invoked in your heart and then gradually you will make progress. See, one thing I liked with Prabhupada's uh, style of teaching is he always entertained questions. Correct, no? In many organizations, they give, Swamiji will give lecture and go away, you can't ask any question. Huh? But Prabhupada always, you will see, he will speak 20 minutes, half an hour and then he entertained questions. In his books also, very logically he explains things. So, Prabhupada never entertained blind following. No? He says, ask questions. You, in fact, Bhagavad Gita also, Arjuna, ask questions and Krishna answers. You will see that. So, Prabhupada is saying that if you have any questions, feel free to ask. No? Don't, doubting is function of intelligence. No? Bhagavad Gita is scientific. Faith. I do not mean faith by blind faith. This Bhagavad Gita is not blind faith. Everything is being explained step by step, scientifically, authoritatively. So try to understand. And if you fortunately become faithful, then your life is successful. Importance of faith in any field. In any field of activity, we must have faith. For example, we go to a barber shop and we... Yeah, the, in the picture you see when barber is shaving him, he's putting the knife exactly in the neck. <laughs> Two millimeter if he sends inside, the fellow will die. 
But the fellow is putting his neck and spreading his neck because he has faith that the barber will not kill him. Correct, no? So we all have, we put faith in our ordinary dealings. Okay, I'll ask you a question. <clears throat> Say you want to go to America. You land in America with the flight and then pay them the ticket charges or you pay the ticket charges first. Yes. Ah, correct, no? So Krishna says, surrender to me, then I will protect you. But we are telling Krishna, first you come and show your darshan, then I will surrender. People say. Whereas in material life, you can see that. First you pay for the ticket and then they take you. Correct, no? So you are supposed to put faith. In marriages, don't you put faith? Like when a boy is getting married to a girl, he hopes that the girl never had an affair before with anybody else. Huh? Not only that, the boy feels that she, he may, she will be good in character, good in behavior. But then after marriage, many times... People are, uh, that trust is broken and then there's a divorce and everything, correct? No? When you're joining a college, you put faith. No? When you're joining a company, you put, when you go to doctor, you put faith. No? So, there are many places where you put faith in any field. Importance of faith authorized recognized. We have to see through the books of knowledge. We have to believe and it will be revealed if you follow. Just like you purchase a ticket for going to India, some India airline. But why do you purchase? You can disbelieve. So, what is the evidence that I shall go to India by purchasing the ticket? But still, with the faith, because people are going there, the company is running, under certain circumstances, you create some faith. Yes, it will take me. And actually, when you purchase ticket and sit down on the plane, oh, next morning you get down. Why you are accepting that faith? Because it is a company that, which is authorized, which is recognized, and therefore you are creating faith. Yeah, like similarly, Bhagavad Gita is authorized by great Acharyas like Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya said, he called the Gita as a Gita Upanishad. Huh? He gave the respect to Gita as much as he gave for, you know, Vedanta and Upanishads. You know this. I'll just show you. Shankaracharya has written this. Yeah, this is the one, I think. Maline mochanam pumsam jalasthanam dine dine. That is it. It's missing. Actually, there is a... Very, uh, this is the one here. It's not there. There are very beautiful verses of Shankaracharya. Oh, here I have put it. Recite this few. Very nice. All of you can read this. Gita Shastram Idam Punyam. Yapate prayataha puman Vishnu padam avapnoti Vaya shokadi varjitaha. See, if you follow the instructions of Bhagavad Gita, you can be freed from all miseries and anxieties in this life. And one will attain, surely attain the abode of Lord Vishnu, he says. Vishnu padam avapnoti, he says. Gita jayana shilasya. Pranayama parasya cha. Naiva santiki papani. Purva janma kritani cha. If one reads Bhagavad Gita very sincerely, with all and with all seriousness, then by the grace of the Lord, the reactions of his past mistreats will not act upon him, he says. See, in the right side, you see, the young people will learn how to live, old will know how to die. The, the ignorant will learn wisdom. The learned will get humility. The rich will become compassionate. The dreamer will get enchantment. And the practical will get counsel. You see? Weak will become strong. Strong will get direction. Nice, no? It is. Malini nil mochana pumsam jalasthanam dine dine Sakrat Gita Amritasnanam Samsaram Ramalanashanam Read it, one may cleanse. One may cleanse himself daily by taking a bath in water, but if one takes a bath even once in the sacred Ganges water of Bhagavad Gita, for him the dirt of material life is altogether vanquished. What an amazing thing. He's comparing Bhagavad Gita to Ganga water. Huh? It purifies us. Gita Sugita Kartavya Kimanya Shastra Vistraihi Yas Swayam Padmanabhasya Yasayam Padmanabhasya 
Because Bhagavad Gita is spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one need not read any other Vedic literature. One need only attentively and regularly hear and read Bhagavad Gita. This one book, Bhagavad Gita, is sufficient because it is the essence of all Vedic literatures and especially it because it is spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Swayam Padmanabhasya Mukha From the lips of the Supreme Lord Krishna Padmanabha, from his own mouth he has spoken this. Such a wonderful literature, he says. Bharatam Pradasarvasvam Vishnu Bhaktra Vishnu Bhaktra Dvinisritam Gita Gango Dakam Pitva Punarjan Manavidyate One who drinks the water of Ganges attains salvation. So, what to speak of one who drinks the nectar of Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita is the essential nectar of Mahabharata and it is spoken by Lord Krishna himself, the original Vishnu. Sarvo Panishad Ogavo Dogdha Gopala Nandanaha Parto Bhatsa Sudhir Bhokta Dugdham Gita Amritam Mahat this Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, the essence of the old Upanishads, is just like a cow. And Lord Krishna, who is famous as a cowherd boy, is milking this cow. Arjuna is just like a calf. And learned scholars and pure devotees are to drink the nectarian milk of Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Ekam Shastram Devaki Putra Gitam. Eko Devo Devaki Putra Yeva. Eko mantrastasya namanyani Karma pyekam tasya devasya seva In this present day, people are very much eager to have one scripture, one god, one religion and one occupation. Therefore, let there be one scripture only, Bhagavad Gita. Let there be one god for the whole world, Shri Krishna, and one mantra, one prayer, the chanting of his name. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishnam, 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 Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And let there be one work only, the service unto Him. Yeah, such a beautiful word. So, this is Bhagavad Gita by Shankara, uh, glorification, uh, glorification of Bhagavad Gita. So, see all these PPTs, if you want, you go to in my YouTube channel, you go to the playlist where you find Gita Amrita Bindu. Huh? It is 30 minutes lectures, which are totally 108. Huh? 108 lectures in Hindi also, in uh, English also I made it. So I made these colorful PPTs with a lot of nice slokas and uh, descriptions like this. They are like 30-30 minutes there. So this was... Gita Amrita Pindu. It was nice, no? Hearing from Shankaracharya. You see how, how he must glorify it, Bhagavad Gita. Huh? So it's Bhagavad Gita is authorized huh? and is recognized. You know, like Oppenheimer and Einstein, they quoted from Gita. When the first bomb was exploded, Oppenheimer quoted. And Einstein also quotes in many places from Gita. English writers like Henry David Toru, Emerson, they have quoted from Gita also. Dr. Radha Krishnan wrote a commentary, who is the president of India, right? Former president of India. And so it's a recognized book. Yeah, accepted by all classes of men of India, all scholars, legends, philosophers. Huh? Yeah. Even Professor Einstein proposes, he was reading regularly this Bhagavad Gita, such a great scientist. So there are many evidences. Huh? So after seeing all this authority of Gita, then you respect it. And then Krishna is saying, if you somehow or other reach my planet, you will never come back into this world. This is the Brahmin and Cobbler. Already we completed this. We discussed it. Brahmin and Cobbler. So, why should we have reasonable faith? See, there is something called as a reasonable faith. Huh? We did this in the Sankal camp uh, of one, uh, you know, wild-eyed man and uh, one New York man and one Aboriginal man. We did that reasonable faith there also. See, whenever you want to go to a doctor, first you check his credential, reputation, credibility, etc. 
then check whether it is mbbs md then you go correct no whether it is a doctor anything similarly in bhakti path also these are some other factors you can think of read it reasoning for faith in god sadhus and scriptures why you should i put faith in god why should i put faith in sadhus and scriptures these are the reasons gives clear cut purpose to life yes now if you see i told you yesterday this boy committed suicide in delhi now i showed you three suicides and uh, hyderabad iit so why are these things happening because these poor children they don't know the goal of life that's a problem hmm? it's like telling a boy you play football without any goal post you can run as much as you want will any of you play football like that will it not be boring huh? life without a goal would be boring huh? now we have a clear goal anybody can say what is your clear goal back to godhead see shastras are so crystal clear they show you a mango tree and tell you put the water here so you ask okay if you put water what will i get you get the mango there huh? immediately there is answer so you you chant hare krishna follow four regs what will i get you go back to godhead it's a clear goal and that shastras tell about the material world how horrible it is dukhalayam and all that but they don't leave you with depression they give you a positive uh, solution to get out of this world and attain eternal happiness huh? so it gives a clear cut purpose to life see one thing is to go back to godhead yeah, but i can tell you another thing going back to godhead may be coming after long time but right now and here i found krishna consciousness is the best thing to do huh? even in this world because i see that it teaches me how to respect all living entities including an ant huh? treat everybody as a brother and sister it also teaches me how i am not the god i am not the center of the world but god is the center and all of us are his children so with that kind of correct blueprint in life you know we can be humble we can be helpful we, we can have a happy society even in this world that means both to lead a happy life here and then beyond death krishna consciousness gives solution to that huh? that's the point it gives a clear cut purpose of life yes qualities of saintly person mind and sense control lust makes man into monsters and See, woman into wicked saintly persons is another thing saintly persons behave diametrically opposite to the common people many times if you see common people are often selfish but saintly persons are often completely selfless look at prabhupada he got couple of heart attacks huh, while going to america how many of you know that yeah can imagine will any old man go to america to preach huh, after getting couple of heart attacks he struggled huh? so saintly persons are uh, ready to sacrifice extend hmm? yeah next one logical fact three gunas no, of action mind and sense control mind See, and sense control lust makes man into monster and woman into witches yeah this is well known thing in this modern day society lust is shaking the whole society especially because of very easy access to sexual videos in the um, uh, smartphones you know children are watching these things in the seventh standard itself and many boys even before completing college they indulge in sex with women and they get very degraded one boy was telling uh, from one of the iams he one of a student uh, devotees from pune huh? so he said that five students were sent to do some project somewhere so they had to go and stay in one uh, locality so they they were given a long hall like a dormitory to sleep and there were cards huh? so he said there were cards but uh, out of the five two were girls and three were boys and the boys purposefully arranged it in such a way that the two girls were their fiances only huh? they took them so he said probably uh, there were three cards here and then two cards on that side these girls and boys they were sleeping in the same cot huh? imagine one boy girl is sleeping here another boy girl is sleeping here covering with a blanket and he is sleeping in the third cot and this boy chanted 16 rounds can you imagine this boy he said probably night they were giggling laughing joking inside the blanket they were doing all kind of dirty things but i i am grateful to you he said because you taught me maha mantra i survived <laughs> sleeping in the same dormitory hmm? he said uh, he said now people have lost their culture and they live like cats and dogs actually they there are they are preparing to go to hell where there's a very heavy punishments are pronounced in the scriptures for those who do illicit sex yeah? like that so you can see that men are becoming monsters and women are becoming witches yeah? so even though they may be iim they may be iit they may hold big degrees but if you watch their lifestyle closely they are two legged animals yeah? 
no less than that they mean uh, one another boy was in singapore he was selling when he came down from the computer company he thought it is a juice shop because many glasses are kept but then he realized it's not a juice shop it's a meat shop where people drink blood of animals so he said even many of the learned men with you know coat suit boot tie they go down and drink that animals blood out of 8 billion population 800 crores people in the world 750 crore people eat meat do you know that 750 crore people only 50 crore people are not eating meat in the world and india has the this thing india has the uh, least meat eaters in the world if you see mm-hmm. otherwise worldwide it's terrible it is huh? it's because people have no control of the senses so and um, bhagavata explains logical facts you see three Lo- gunas logical facts three gunas in action yoga meditation landmarks heart purified from anarthas repeatability of process heart transformation yeah like mrigari had a heart transformation even all of you you raised hand you were eating meat before now you gave up meat because of chanting hare krishna you see so in this way you can see the repeatability of the process a heart changes and uh, and the landmarks means there are nine stages in bhakti when you go to second third fourth stage your confidence level will increase more and more huh? yeah blind faith known bona fide gurus who neither follow any scriptures nor any principles they do not know what is shastra neither they follow principle still they gather some people and the world is full with such not bona fide gathering so but they have faith in their so called guru that somewhere other so called meditation these things are going on many bogus gurus say don't read shastra's books you you know you get here from me i am a realized soul they say but they speak all bluff huh? so he saying even in the scientific world you know there is a botanical name for every tree every plant you know and every plant or tree looks like you know the leaf will be having some symmetry some kind of shape and everything even in your chemical lab you have done this right like uh, acids and bases you must have tested similarly guru should be tested also rapa said if a guru says i am god is dog <laughs> rapa said that's the first test of a guru huh? any guru claims to be god hmm? and we should be able to see guru should be studying the scriptures he should be living by the scripture his life should be transparent i used to tell the boys you come to our temple and see our ashram doors are open you can come inside and see how we are living stay for a month and watch how is our lifestyle so guru's life should be completely transparent hmm? you should not be a cheater Faith comes by surrender, question and service. Four point thirty four Bhagavad Gita. Tadve de prani pate na pare prashne na seva ya upadekshanti te gyanam yani na sattva darshan. That's the verse. Not only you should chant, you should also enter seva, ask questions, learn answers. Everything will become realized by you. So now you can take this one. Morning, you all took snapshot. I have added one question in this. I have slightly modified it. You can click this one. Huh? You send it. Oh, yes, send it to all of you. Say, WhatsApp. You send it. Okay, okay. So you will get it in your WhatsApp. You can. So you will put. Now you have completed it. Ah, oh, this also you can take it. I think. I go. We are not making in group now. We are only putting it because in those days we used to do groups. Now we are not doing in group now. There is no time uh, for making. And the and the attend attendees are very big number in this. Therefore, we are not making group. Okay. So we completed that session, which is importance of faith and danger of doubts. Shri Prabhupada ki. So all this was like a background thing. Now the real thing starts tomorrow. I'll be starting with why do we put faith in spiritual world? That's a topic we'll start with tomorrow, and then we will continue with. Then after putting faith in spiritual world, we'll enter into spiritual world. What is happening there? We will discuss gradually. We will. we wanted to end by 8 o'clock because yesterday night it got late for many of you to sleep i heard so we want you to eat prasad early and go to sleep very quickly huh? so you get adequate sleep so if you don't sleep 6 hours you will feel little drowsy in during your morning chanting huh? or you will miss the morning program so you can quickly proceed from here okay so we can announce hare krishna